Welcome back to Asian News with me, Vanessa. Taiwan appeals to the United States not to forget the free trade deals. <laughs> Taiwan's top trade negotiator appeals to the United States not to forget that the island wants the free trade deal but understand it will not happen immediately and is willing to make other agreements first as building blocks. Taiwan and the United States last week announced the United States and Taiwan Initiative on 21st Century Trade, which envisages new trade talks. John Deng, who goes to Washington at the end of the month for talks with senior United States officials in an interview, told traders that ultimately what they wanted was a free trade agreement. Even the United States government has not publicly said such a deal is on the cards. <laughs> Taiwan also wants to join the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership and applied to do so in September. China has also applied and says it opposes Taiwan joining. Deng says Taiwan would have to wait for Britain's more advanced application to be approved first before member states Canada, Australia, Brunei, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore and Vietnam would consider Taiwan. But he says he did not think the CPTPP should have to follow the World Trade Organization model whereby both Taiwan and China joined at the same time to avoid any potentially thorny political issues favoring either party. Australia expands stronger security relations with Indonesia. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese heralded a deepening relationship with close neighbour Indonesia, pledging stronger cooperation and security during his first bilateral foreign visit. I'm focused on sitting with President Widodo, not sitting with President Putin. Uh, it is in Australia's interest. Albanese also pledges increased cooperation on areas like trade and climate change and signalled his interest in attending the G20 summit in November, which will be chaired by Indonesia. The remarks come amid rising tension between China and the United States in the Indo-Pacific, with Albanese labeling an incident when a Chinese fighter aircraft dangerously intercepted an Australian military surveillance plane in the South China Sea region in May as an act of aggression. Stressing the importance of engaging with the wider region and ASEAN, the new Australian Prime Minister had brought a high-profile business delegation along with Foreign Minister Penny Wong and Trade Minister Don Farrell. Southeast Asia Defence holds a meeting with the aim of helping the region manage tensions. Top officials from Malaysia, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand and Britain says that their 51-year-old Five Power Defence Arrangement PAC was solid, relevant and crucial to managing rising tensions in the region. Spiral into a switch situation. Um, then After meeting on the sidelines of the Shangri-La Dialogue, the officials told a news conference that the relationship among the member nations was warm and that they were focused on the future even amid increasing geopolitical complexities. The South China Sea is not a question of how many... Malaysia's Senior Minister for Defense, Hishamuddin Hussein, says as tension in the region increased sharply, particularly between China and United States allies, the FPDA has great relevance as a moderating force. Architecture as well, but um, something which... Hishamuddin, Singaporean Defense Minister, Ang and Hen, Australian Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Defense, Richard Marlers, New Zealand Defence Ministry Penny Hanare and British High Commissioner to Singapore Kara Owen also reaffirmed their commitment to the FPDA and noted its relevance for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Philippines and China celebrate 21st Friendship Day and will continue the cooperative partnership of two nations to reach new heights. The event marks the 21st Filipino-Chinese Friendship Day with more than 300 individuals participating, including officials and representatives of overseas Chinese. Philippine President-elect Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos says the long-standing friendly relationship between the Philippines and China has greatly benefited people of the two countries, and both diplomatic relations and fruitful cooperation between the two nations will continue to scale new heights. Regional peace and stability 
to the employment of opportunities for our people. Marcus says the century-old relationship and friendship of the Philippines and China has been and will continue to be of great mutual benefit to our people from trade, arts, culture, athletics to regional peace and stability to the employment of opportunities for our people and all the significantly generous efforts extended to the Philippines during the pandemic. The cooperative partnership of our nations continue to reach new heights. China and Philippines formally established diplomatic relations on June 9, 1975. China says will not accept or recognize South China Sea arbitration. At a press conference in Singapore on the sidelines of the dialogue, Hele says, former deputy director of the Academy of Military Sciences of the Chinese People's Liberation Army, reiterated that China neither recognizes nor accepts the arbitration issues by the Hague-based tribunal. The Philippines filed a compulsory arbitration against China at the Permanent Court of the Arbitration at the Hague in 2013. The PCA issued its final decision over the South China Sea case in support of the Philippine side on July 12 of 2016. China has declared the decision null and void and maintained that the tribunal has no jurisdiction over the case. At the press conference, he also reviewed Kishida's statement in the speech of the East China Sea, in which Kishida stated that in the East China Sea, unilateral attempts to change the status quo by force in violation of the international law are continuing. He pointed out that Japan was the first to change the status quo in the East China Sea. In 2012, despite the strong opposition from China, the Japanese government illegally purchased the Diaoyu Island and its affiliated islands in an attempt to nationalize the islands, which severely undermined China's sovereignty. Adding China doesn't accept Japan's accusation that China is using its capabilities and forced to change the status quo in the area. Singapore says there is practical aspect to not inviting Russia to security meeting. Singapore Defense Minister Ng Inghen says there is a practical aspect to not inviting Russia to a top security meeting. Double uh, double S, not, they're not alone in, in many meetings. Not the last Russia. day of the forum, which has seen talks dominated by Ukraine war and the relationship between the United States and China. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky invites and speaks at the forum virtually, talks to the delegates that their nation's support was crucial not just to defeat the Russian invasion, but to preserve the rules-based order. China's increasingly tense relationship with the United States also featured in nearly every session of the Shangri-La Dialogue in Singapore. Although Ang says that delegates had not indicated there wasn't an ultimatum for ASEAN countries to choose one or the other country. Chinese general warns neighbors on disorder instigation by external countries. Chinese State Councilor and Defense Minister Wei Feng He says countries in the South China Sea region are bonded neighbors with time-honored relationship who should guard against external countries to mess up and sow disorder in the regional neighborhood. Wei makes the blistering remark when delivering a speech themed Chinese vision for regional order at a plenary session of the 90th Shangri-La Dialogue in Singapore. A three-day summit kicked off. He affirms the situation in the South China Sea is becoming sound and stable through the joint efforts of China and the ASEAN countries. He also calls on countries in the region to work together to prevent interventions from outside the region. Since its launch in 2002 by the British think tank IISS with the support of the Singaporean government, the Shangri-La Dialogue, officially known as the Asia Security Summit, has been held annually except for 2020 and 2021. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon. Stay safe, stay healthy. Have a nice weekend.